Hi everyone, this is my terminal. Who here uses the terminal for doing whatever programming? Okay, cool. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I've been, uh, okay, uh, is there a timer? Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, for the past year or so, I've been interested in this thing of uh, you know creating applications for the terminal, uh, and then that's what I'm talking uh, to you about today. And um, you know, in this at this day and age, like you might wonder why will someone you know do these things because like web and mobile are all the rage. And so well, well, the thing is. Um, uh, the terminal has been like a decent, uh, has been surviving all these, you know, decades. And I figure I myself will be still using it, uh, I don't know, uh, until the end of my life, probably. So because there's some things that are just a little comfortable about it. And uh, so we'll continue using it. And plus, it's all just fun, you know, that maybe I don't need to just find much. So, uh, okay, so what can we do in a terminal? So. Uh, this presentation is running in a terminal, so as you can see, and you essentially show text, and, you know, in positions, and you can, you have some coloring support, like, special nowadays, like, if you look, uh, you know, closely, you can see there's this dissolving effect, where you can see, like, there are much more colors than we're showing this slide, there are, like, 256 colors, so that's pretty cool, that's an advantage that we have that we terminals uh, from years ago didn't. Uh, and we also have Unicode, uh, like UTF-8 and everything. So there are plenty of new things that we can do now that uh, could be, so you can draw stuff, you can, uh, yeah, you can draw, like use the Unicode characters for drawing boxes and stuff. And we can use emoji also because emoji is also in Unicode. So, all right, uh, let's talk about Python. So Python is my programming language of choice, and uh, there are a bunch of cool libraries for doing stuff in the terminal. There, are, uh, so I listed here some of the most prominent ones. And uh, so Uvid is the one that I've been using most uh, recently uh, um, as a hobby. Like I answer people's questions, I stock, I stock overflow about it as a way of learning it, which is pretty cool. And so um, these are here most for you to check it out. Prompt toolkits for writing shells. Or with this, this thing that I'm going to talk more, more about. There are curses that's a bit more low level, and there's askematics that's like you can build movies with this thing <laughs> because it has plenty of you know neat effects. So uh, uh, maybe I should show you like quickly stuff that I built with this Urwid library. So one of the first things that I built when I was exploring this thing was uh, this solitaire clone, and uh, so it's this thing. Uh, so here we're drawing like boxes with Unicode and then you can, uh, one thing cool of the terminals these days is it support clicking. I don't know if you can see the mouse, apparently not, but I'm clicking on the two right here and then I'm selecting it and then I can't, you know, go to the input it right away. And so, yeah, you know, this is clicking on the terminal. Cool. So I can uh, open up the card there. It's a bit of a shame that, that you cannot see the cursor, but anyway. So yeah, this is, yeah, this was a lot of fun to build. Uh, again, right, just text, right? Uh, the other thing that I did was a drone machine that I built with uh, someone that is here in the audience. Say hello, Dom. And so what we did was uh, we used Urbit to build this thing. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but uh, yeah, so we did this thing. <laughs> uh, a drum machine is like you draw a drum pattern and then, uh, yeah, it plays around in a loop. And uh, this was synchronizing with async IO loop. So it was also a fun way of learning what you can do with async IO that's not, you know, network and, you know, HTTP requests. And so this was fun. And the other thing <laughs> was uh, this. Uh, game, this little game that you can, uh, like, it, uh, you get a random grid of computer networks, and then you gotta connect them so that they are all, you know, well, connected. <laughs> yeah, so, right. Woo, yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, this is fun stuff, right? And then, uh, so, all right, so, oh, wait. Uh, I'm going to try to talk real briefly about how I'm doing on time. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, Orbit. Uh, Orbit is like yeah, this library that gives you like a way of putting widgets in the terminal. And uh, there are basic widgets that show, you know, buttons and you can say, uh, put this text here and then, uh, and it flows, like you can resize, uh, maybe if I can show you this, uh, I, you can resize and it will try to resize, you know, okay, like this case it was too small, but if I can, you know, 
you see how it uh, it flows and like it resizes the the stuff so this is the stuff that uh, uh Udu gives you for free you can you, you just draw your widgets and oops uh my presentation broke because i resized the window <laughs> okay let's see if i can recover where were we so we were here and then there are containers, like basically widgets that you can say, like uh, put these things, you know, horizontally, vertically. And then there are decoration stuff that is needed before the terminal. You need to say, for example, if you want to put something in the center, you actually have to say, okay, like um, put spaces around me or, you know, uh, above me. And so that, this is why this widgets exist. And then there's an event loop, which is the thing that handle user events, like uh, someone click it or someone press this key. And... Uh, so already it comes with its own event loop and you can replace it by other event loops. Uh, <clears throat> so this thing isn't uh, fully abstracting out things, which means that you still need to care that this uh, is still like it's running on a terminal. So you still need to know that, okay, this is text and you need to know, do the things like, yeah, like this thing that I just said, like uh, putting spaces around me and stuff. And so, yeah, it's a kind of leaky abstraction, but still like um, it, uh, it gives you a lot, uh, it's better than, you know, just uh, using uh, some low level thing and um, it's really fun. And so one of the examples of the leak, this leak abstraction is one of this concept that's kind of tricky to understand. Uh, it, it was quite uh, tricky for me. And uh, so the widgets have this thing, sizing mode, you need to be aware of it. Each widget has uh, a sizing thing. And so like, if it is a fixed sizing mode, and then it is like a widget that's always this defined the uh, width and height, and then um, it didn't need to know about uh, its own, uh, okay, I have this many characters of width and this many characters of height. And then there are others that uh, just adapt with the flow, the vertical flow, and others that uh, don't really care, and then that let the container widget to care about it. So you need kind of need to be aware of these things when you write this kind of code. So uh it isn't fully uh abstract and uh finally like there is not really much of you know best practice for this kind of thing because uh uh it was made as more of like a construction set or like with simple widgets that you can build up onto build your own thing because again this is still just text in a terminal and you can do whatever you want like you can make a, an ascii art movie if you want right so uh, that was it that I had to show. And if I still have time, do I still have time? I probably don't. Uh, you press home to unlock. Okay, if I had time, I, I wasted it right now. So I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs>